Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of AVA, the Album vs. Album podcast, where I sit down either by myself or with a guest, talk about which album fits under a niche umbrella vest. Um, I am your host, Johnny, or also known as Viral Rack. And for those who've never listened to the show before, um, usually I'll sit down with two records and talk about which one uh, more fulfills a specific thing that always is changing every single episode. Um, this will be the last solo episode for a while because I have nailed down recording times for a couple of collaborations. Uh, and then I have another one that is planned for a day. We'll see if it happens. Um, just because our schedules, me and this particular guest, have had to reschedule this recording time a couple of different times. But uh, it's a crazy world. No hate. Uh, just it's a crazy world, and we can't. Uh, we trying to. We out here trying to just lock down some sweet hashtag spicy slime boy content. But no, um. I will be having a a handful of guests over the next couple of episodes, so it won't just be me sitting here in my room by myself talking about music. Um, But I will be doing that this week. Uh, But I hope you're all doing well. Uh, I'm doing okay. It's been a little hectic on my end as well, which is why uh, I got no hate for anyone who's got to reschedule because I understand the world that we're in right now is hectic as fuck. Things keep happening, and it's hard to really find a foundation for... uh, for things. So this was kind of an emergency thrown uh, together idea. And, but it is one that I've been stewing with. I just was thinking about doing it later. And it's one that involves uh, two particular artists that are definitely divisive in their respective scenes. Um, Talking about Kid Cudi and Kanye West. And two of their most um, not liked across the board records of their career for their own reasons. And we're going to talk about uh, their infamy throughout this episode. But before we we get to that, I just want to uh, bounce back on last week's episode or last time's episode one more time. Um, no comments on the. Uh, Willy Wonka episode, but I'm not 100% surprised. Um, it, like I, like I said in the episode, it was a very, it was like the most niche episode I've done yet, and one that I don't know anyone that's as passionate about um, this particular musical as I am, uh, especially since you know. The musical scene ain't necessarily the same as the music reviewing scene, but uh, I I still stand by the the statement that I made. I still think that Primus's is not as bad. And uh, again, I encourage if you do listen and you do want to, if you do have anything to contribute to the conversation, uh, feel free to do so. I I always try to make an effort to. Uh, reply or extend anybody else's talking points they have in the next episode. And obviously, like I said, I'll be passing the question off to the guests to see if they have anything they would like to add on the subject before diving into the the new episode at hand. But I still want to thank everyone that's watching as well, because I, I am people are enjoying this segment. Um, I just understand that sometimes it's it's not necessarily the easiest or it's it's sometimes hard to extend talking points um or anything like that you know i just appreciate you guys for for tuning in giving it likes you know just for the support in general it's always it's always loved um but yeah that's that's kind of the end of that segment the subject for this week though is one that i know it's it's gonna be dicey especially in given in in one instance because the artist in particular has gone pretty public about how this record affected their lives and the other it's pretty new so it could be hard to say how long the particular album will live in infamy infamy but i feel like this is a pretty 
um like the the second record in question is is it's pretty notable now like even though it's we're only a year out from it it's 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 a it's a it's an aesthetic that the artist in question writing wise isn't necessarily venturing away from um they have only doubled down on that idea and i get it it's just going to be a very interesting uh week this week I'm talking about speed and bullet to heaven and jesus is king the the newest kanye west record the, or the most recent kanye west record as of recording this um and like i said off the bat uh speed and bullet to heaven which we're gonna we're gonna get into first because it was the it was the one that came out first was the second time in his career that Kid Cudi decided to dive into uh, rock. Because he did Wizard. He did the whole Wizard shtick. And um, it was it was very not well received. Speed and Bullet to Heaven was sort of, in the review scene, kind of infamously hated. And, you know, I I understand why. It was a. Uh, it was a very raw release. It was a very lo-fi release, more so than Wizard. Wizard had that kind of studio sheen that you would see from like newer bands trying to coat grunge. But I mean, there's a lot on this record that's just very noisy and lo-fi and raw, and it's. It's not a good record. Like I, I didn't put it on my worst of the decade list because it, it's up there for for one of the worst. But it's also one of those records that, and this is kind of the whole point of a uh, Speed and Bullet at this point. Speed and Bullet's kind of been recontextualized as sort of Cuddy's lowest point, um, and because you know he came back with with something a little more in line with his his normal sound and and got help but it's it's a record where Cuddy seemingly was buried in his own sadness buried in his own sorrow you know um it just happened to also be a really rough release to sit through with its various um Beavis and Butthead injection injections 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 interludes like in Man of the Night uh Handle with Care and Red Sabbath the oh and an adventure and on adventures uh and having its very monotonous moments like on amen or on parts of the opener edge of the earth post-mortem boredom uh it's just cutty kind of really feeling creatively directionless and if i could draw a parallel actually it kind of like listening to this album evokes a lot of the headspace I was in in like 2014, 20 early 2015. It was it's a weird it's a weird experience listening to this record because I get it. I get where Cuddy's coming from emotionally. And that's another reason why I don't want to hate this record, just be outright a hater on this record because I get it. Like, I know it's a record that across the board people don't really like. Anthony gave it a zero. Pitchfork gave it a four. Like, it's a record that did not get positive reception. And it's probably Cuddy's most abstract record, um, for sure. Uh, But, um, yeah. Actually, recently, it's funny, like a week ago, Cuddy talked a little bit about... um, this record in reflection you know he talked about it was a cry for help uh, quoting him on twitter i was literally screaming out to the world that i was hurting deeply and just wanted so badly to be understood uh the low sales from that album didn't bump me out i thought it was raw as fuck to have it in my discography and i knew no one no one could have done something so ballsy and risk it all a lot of people play it safe and are afraid to explore their sound i've always had no fear so be fearless, do what you feel, trust me, it will lead you on a great path of self-discovery and healing and growth. There's so much to do and see in life, explore and go for it, that's all I do. And that's true. 
Like, if you listen to Speed and Bullet, it is a very abstract release. It's a very weird album um, that feels like an extension from um, the Wizard era, just in a very avant-garde way, and that's that's respectable it just again sonically did not hit every anyone's ears in that way but again as i stated in those tweets and as has gone on with time cuddy has really recontextualized speed and bullet to heaven into this purging period of his life he was purging his own personal demons he was he was artistically exercising his frustrations with himself, his headspace in the world. And I can respect that. You know what I mean? I think that it's still something I'd rather not listen to. It's still low on my totem pole in Kid Cudi's discography, but I understand why it exists. Even if it sticks out like a sore thumb in his discography, I will say that since then, he's he's really bounced back. You know, he did the whole passion, pain, demon slaying thing after he got help and worked through his depression in a different way. And not only that, the whole kids see ghosts thing. Like he's he's really coming to a new age of his artistic delivery, and I'm happy for him. I really am. Like I said in my singles review that I dropped uh, this week. I, I do like Kid Cudi. I have a lot of respect for Kid Cudi. I think that he's a very ambitious artist. And I like... I like that he wants to be so bold. Um, in the same hat, and one of his frequent collaborators, his other kid that sees ghosts, Kanye West, last year, dropped Jesus is King, a project that after following a really successful year for him where he had his hands in so many different pots. You know, he did Kid See Ghosts. He produced uh, a handful of some incredibly well-received records uh, that year. He did uh, Nas's newest album, which I personally, I personally liked, but I understand why some may not. Um, he did Pusha T's newest record, uh, Daytona, which fucking swept the hip hop world by storm with what, uh, it accomplished, what it did uh, for the scene. And he produced, uh, Tiana Taylor's la uh, last record or her 2018 record, KTSE, which again, got really high praise across the board. It's a record that, uh, people enjoy. <coughs> And he decided, and he produced his own record, which I I didn't really like. If he didn't make Jesus is King, I would have made Ye the, state, the, the comparison point for this record. But Jesus is King really is that big of a stain. Ye has its fans, and I get it. Uh, I don't like it. I think that it's him doing something similar to what Kanye or Cuddy did with Speed and Bullet to Heaven, where he's purging through his own personal problems. He's being very upfront with his bipolar disorder, and the album feels like a dive into the like the mind of Kanye West in the same way that Life of Pablo was, but in a lesser way, IMO. Um, but no, instead, I'm talking about Jesus is King, the record that he dropped a year later that has him... Exploring again, doubling down on a concept he's not unfamiliar with, Christianity and his his faith in general. You know, because he popped on the scene with Jesus Walks. You know, he's he's used religious imagery or, or gospel accompaniment a lot in his career. You know, uh, Rose has had him confronting his grandmother's death. Um, Ultralight Beam had the choir in it, and it felt like the a sermon, you know, in the church of Kanye West. And so on paper, this sounds like it would be a spectacular idea, you know, to have Kanye coming back with some Christian bops and doing what he did with, uh, with, um, 
Jesus Walks, but across a whole project. His production has been nothing but more ambitious since those days. And so seeing crazy Kanye doing Christian music sounds like it might be a decent idea. Spoilers, it's not. Um, This record has decent uh, things on it. Uh, The song Use the Gospel brings clips back together, which is really nice after Pusha T spent a decade uh, really just owning the solo circuit. I mean, he's got a cool Kenny G feature on there as well. Uh, There's tracks like Salah, which have uh, some decent production on it. Um, Kanye's really keeping that experimental or that ambitious production style or expanding upon his production palette in the same way that he always does. It just, it doesn't feel as honest lyrically as people may have wanted from a Christian Kanye record. Um, Spectrum Pulse, his review of this record is iconic. It's incredible. He does a great job at deconstructing the themes of the record while also showing how they don't necessarily fall in line with Christian ideals. It is a beautiful shit posty type review that I am was really happy to see come out because um I'm not a Christian man. I've I you know, I'm not really super tied to spirituality. I have Jewish heritage. Um I am a observe I observe Jewish holidays. You know, I understand the um the traditions within my culture and, you know, I would like to believe what that faith is wanting, but I am not a die-hard, ride-or-die spiritual guy. It's just not, it's just not me. And so, but even, even as an outsider to that scene... I understand Christian culture. I understand Christian ideals. I understand Christianity as a concept. And, uh, yeah, I don't think Jesus is King really taps into that all that well at all. Um, I think it's it has its cheese. You know, obviously everyone knows the closed on Sunday, you're my Chick-fil-A line. Like, that's awful. One of the worst lines Kanye's ever fucking written Um, but even, even, even outside of that, like this record just feels disingenuous. You know, when, when Kanye made Jesus walks, it felt like a call to arms for those in the community to embrace their spirituality. And I think that's what made it work. I think that's what made it so powerful. You know, the reason why you empathize with Kanye on roses or, <clears throat> anytime he's ever sort of confessed his sorrows it's because you see or you know him as the guy who made Jesus walks at least in his early career you know um but and even in ultralight beam when he sort of recontextualized spiritual gospel assets in a very personal way and interpolated it onto life of pablo it still felt like kanye was tied to his roots in a very genuine way and this record feels so half-hearted and disingenuous. Like, it doesn't... It's shocking how... much distance this seemingly runs away from Ye and tries so hard to stand out across from it. But because it's following this tenure with Kanye West where he's kind of come across as blasphemous and wrapped up in his own ego. Um, Any sort of expressions on this that try to come across as genuinely spiritual don't because Kanye still feels so away from those ideals, um, again, lyrically and... Even some of the production, it just doesn't feel in line with the scene. 
And while Kanye, it would seem bold that Kanye is trying to produce something more akin to a contemporary Christian record, those records never work, man. Like, across the board, Christian music is typically never made hits because it di- it, it never sounds like the rest of the scene. That's another reason why Jesus Walks works so well and is shocking because... It's a successfully produced hip hop song that doesn't sound like a Christian hip hop song. <clears throat> this sort of attempt at melding Kanye's minimalism and experimental edge with Christianity comes across like the disingenuous attempts at being trendy that other Christian artists do. Um, and while Christian music also has kind of transcended those cheesy pasts, especially in hip-hop. A lot of Christian rappers get a lot of love nowadays. This just doesn't have that same sting. You know, the the faith on here feels, again, half-baked or wrapped up in consumerism in a way that doesn't match the ideals of Christianity. Again, <clears throat> Mark's review of this record, phenomenal, and actually is a real point of reference to a lot of uh this part of the podcast because he's a very studied man and he he will speak on the record more eloquently than anybody ever would at least until i don't know somebody writes like a thesis on how much it fails but his review is incredible again check it out if you haven't he uh he wraps up everything he talks about everything that the the record does poorly incredibly well in the context of what it's trying to do um but why do i think and if it's not obvious i think that this album's infamy is going to last longer in the public the public consciousness because not only is he sort of continuing that thread uh or trying to keep the same um, mindset behind his newest single, uh, that's the biggest issue with it, is that he's trying to retain the... Um, the same imagery that he kept on Jesus as king, uh, like washes in the blood, but it's melding with another record of his that is one of my least favorites, Yeezus. I hate Yeezus. And the fact that he's sort of trying to combine, and while washes in the blood I feel like is more successful because it, it feels more truthful, and it feels like it's trying to tie into um, messages that are really important to what's going on now. And Kanye sort of as a personality seemingly trying to win back his community. Um, or at least parts of his community by, you know, distancing himself from a certain friend that he made. And uh, talk a lot about the violence and, and what's going on now. Uh, that's great. But it is still, like, weirdly akin to his Jesus is King stuff. So it's a record that's not going away, at least creatively, at least not for a while. And if he continues to adorn this really Christian image, it's not going to go away. And it's it, Jesus is King is going to act as the, the shifting point in his career where while he was sort of, creatively all over the map prior with Ye and Kid See Ghost coming out in the same year, Jesus is King is going to act as the pivotal point where Kanye's career is going to nosedive if he keeps in this direction, or even if he doesn't. I feel like it's going to be hard for him to bounce back from Jesus is King because that record is so bad. It is so fucking bad, you know. Cuddy at least recontextualized Speed and Bullet to Heaven, and he followed it up with an incredible... Uh, bounce back. It's such a passion pain. Demon slaying is such a good record. Like I, 
I can't express how happy I was to see Passion Pain Demon Slain be that good. You know, I don't think it's his best record, but I think that compared to Speed and Bullet to Heaven, it's a fucking gold star. You know, and it sees him having fun. It sees him collaborating with artists in a really fun way. <clears throat> and I really enjoy uh, the the follow-up he made. And I love how, as time has gone on, he's continued to contextualize Speed and Bullet to Heaven in a way that honestly makes sense to me. Again, because when I listen to that record, it it takes me back to a headspace that I was not healthy in. I was not feeling well. I was not... I was in my own shit, you know, depression-wise. I was going through a lot. And so I understand why that record sounds the way it does. Jesus King, you look at it at any angle, it doesn't make sense. You know, oh, Kanye's doing the Christian thing, you know, but he's done that before. That's how he came out in the scene, and it didn't sound this bad. It didn't sound this dishonest. It didn't sound this half-hearted, you know, um... Oh, you know, his production's always been a little weird. Yeah, but Ye's production wasn't terrible. Kids See Ghost was amazing. You know? He did the production on those records. I think the production on um, uh, The Life of Pablo is really, really good. You know? But Jesus is King just doesn't hit the same mark. You know? And I think it's because he's trying to meld his world, his old world, with his new, with his new world, you know. And that's 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 a messy combination. And he's still trying to do it. Like I said, his newest single, keeping down the same path, but he's throwing uses in the ring, which just sounds like a nightmare to me. It's like a dream I don't want to go to. If his next record sounds like that, I'm not excited for it. I'm also already not excited for it because. Again, it's it's following his worst record in his career, you know. And if this new single is any flavor of it, I'm not hopeful for the future of Kanye West, you know. And that's why I feel like it's gonna live more in infamy than uh, Speed and Bull to Heaven ever will, because uh, Cuddy is a much more graceful artist than Kanye West. Kanye's Kanye is always kind of a, a mixed bag. He's always been kind of a loose cannon. You know, while you could say you don't know what Kanye is going to do next, that's 100% true. But, <clears throat> again, because he's keeping with the ties that kept Jesus as King going, he's just expanding upon that. That does not bode well. That did, That is what's going to be the, the nail in uh, his creative coffin IMO. You know, while he may be doing, while he may be trying to fix his image, uh, he's not fixing his music. At least, in, in my opinion. Some may really be excited for this new project, and that's cool. Uh, I will say it's probably going to be more sonically interesting than Jesus is King was. Um, but I also just don't know what the future holds for Kanye. But again, I feel like the, the stain that this particular record left is going to be everlasting. Unless Kanye goes super drastic, recontextual. If he does what Kid Cudi did, awesome. I'd love to see it happen. But I feel like this record, because of its nature, because of its sounds, because of its writing, it's going to live more in the public consciousness a lot longer than Speed Bullet to Heaven. And judging by the polls on Instagram, uh, y'all don't agree. Y'all do not agree with me. Um, this record actually did not have the same... Um, the same... response. You guys disagreed. You guys... Uh, by a 67 to 33 percent difference, um, Speed and Bullet won 10 to 5. And I get it. And I think it's more to do with the memes. You know, this record has been around longer, like I said. And so I understand why um, this record still sits in people's minds. Uh, as a whole, it's a record that, again, has been memed. You know, the Fantana review is kind of famous at this point for being a true 
tear down of this record uh, conceptually. And I get that, you know, nobody did uh, outside of Mark anyway. Uh, nobody did a big teardown of this record. It wasn't a record that had the same kind of reaction. You know, it, I mean, Anthony gave it a more straightforward review. But again, I feel like Mark kind of said it best that it's like in his review, he tore it down in a very real but very hilarious way. Um, and I feel like that a lot of what he said in that review is what's going to make this record in the long run a bigger stain in Kanye's career. Which, again, you could argue Kanye has other stains. Yeezus, yay. People don't like the life of Pablo. His discography across the board is divisive. And that could also be why Speed and Bullet might live in people's minds more as a bigger infamous stain because <clears throat> uh, across his whole career, even when he did Wizard, it wasn't as bad as Speed and Bullet to Heaven. And across the board, Cuddy has the more consistent sonically and reception-wise discography but, yeah, it's it's not, I, I, I don't know, I don't know. I think that as time goes on, Cuddy will continue to distance himself from Speed and Bullet to Heaven or recontextualize it still, and it won't be the bigger stain on his career. I think it's going to be a bigger point of sort of reflection, for sure, but he'll continue to make records that eclipse... Um, speed and bullet to heaven and, and continue to bury it in uh as far as being a stain he'll cover it up you know what i mean cuddy or kanye i don't think will do that not none of his records do that you know for every direction shift he makes it, it continue it doesn't wash away anything negative that he's done in the past you know i hate yeezus i hate yay uh, I hate Jesus is King. Those records never seem to go away. And it's because not only does Kanye have that inconsistent discography that you never know what you're going to like or you never know what you're going to get, he doesn't do anything to address those periods. You know, and that's, I feel like, also part of the issue. He doesn't recontextualize anything. He just lets something sit there and stew and just stain the carpet. And it's not, I don't know, I feel like it's very... It's very, it's very bad, <laughs> and that's again another reason why I think it's going to sit in people's minds more. Maybe that's just me. What do you guys think? I feel like uh, I feel like this would be a good point to wrap up this episode. Again, I know it's not as long as the other episodes are, and I apologize. Usually, it's easier to kind of have bounce back with a guest, which is why I'm excited for the next couple of episodes. I'm excited for you guys to hear me banter as opposed to just kind of nail a point home. Uh, thank you so much for listening. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a like. If you want to see more of my music, gaming, and general notary content, be sure to subscribe. Special thanks to my patrons. If you would like to join their ranks to get early access to content, exclusive content, or help drive the community, it's linked in the description. I think I said it, but if you like this podcast, give it a like. Um, I'm trying to get this on uh, other platforms, so if you are listening to this somewhere else, be sure to subscribe to it on there as well. Follow us on whatever platform you choose to listen to us on. Um, and all that sort of stuff. Again, if you have any talking points that I may have missed on these records, be sure to leave it in a comment or a tweet anywhere on the internet, and I'll be sure to address it in the next episode, uh, if not with the guest by myself before I put it up. Um, I'm going to get out of here, though. I have been Viral Rack. You guys are good days, lives, and situations, and I'll see you another day. <laughs>